Today, we are sharing Warner Mifflin's story as part of the Delaware Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs, Delaware Day 2020. Warner Mifflin was a giant of an 18th century abolitionist. Standing slightly short of seven feet, his convictions about freedom for all mirrored his height. Mifflin was not a prolific writer, but we know him by the ways he tried to reach those in power. He petitioned legislatures. He wrote to congressmen, governors, and presidents. He believed slavery was a blight on America and that America would pay for the sin of slavery if it was not abolished. Warner Mifflin was born into a Quaker household on the eastern shore of Virginia in 1745. His father, Daniel Mifflin, was one of the largest slaveholders in the county. Slavery was an accepted practice to maintain the fortunes and lands of the family. As a teenager, Warner Mifflin recounted that a young enslaved man questioned whether it could be right that the enslaved men and women should be toiling in order to raise him and send him to school. Warner Mifflin never forgot this question, and it planted the seed for a new way of thinking. After Marion, Mifflin moved to Chestnut Grove, a farm south of Dover, Delaware, near Camden. He became a slaveholder through his marriage. While in Kent County, he dedicated time and energy to the Quakers, also known as the Society of Friends. Influenced by the first wave of abolitionists, the Quakers began to reject slavery. At first, Warner Mifflin hesitated to join the ranks. He believed that he was a good master, that he could not support his family without the labor of enslaved people. And so Warner Mifflin closed his ears to what he had held as his religious duty. But Quaker sentiment had turned against slavery. In 1774, at the yearly Friends Meeting, it was declared that slave owning was an evil practice and an offense against humanity and God. Warner Mifflin could no longer turn a blind eye. After this, Mifflin manumitted or set freed everyone he held in bondage. In this manumission document, he states, he was fully persuaded in my conscience that it is a sin of a deep dye to make slaves of my fellow creatures or to continue them in slavery. Mifflin looked for new ways to continue his anti-slavery work. His personal beliefs about the ills of slavery led him on a crusade from North Carolina to New England to end the practice. By the 1780s, Mifflin began his campaign to change state laws to include the abolition of slavery and the slave trade, to discourage kidnapping of free African Americans, and laws to facilitate manumissions. He co-founded the Delaware Society for the Abolition of Slavery. By the 1790s, his home Chestnut Grove had become a haven for those seeking freedom. Warner Mifflin offered counsel, shelter, and supported freedom suits. For this, he was sued by multiple slaveholders for the abetting the flight of slaves. Even the threat of financial ruin did not stop his work. This work took a toll on his body. By 1798, his health had declined, but this did not deter him from attending the annual meeting in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, he chose to attend during the yellow fever epidemic. After attending the meeting and administering to the sick in Philadelphia, Warner Mifflin returned home. He succumbed to the disease. When considering Warner Mifflin's work and influence, the famous African-American minister, Richard Allen, said, we cannot but regret the loss of that great and good man whose labors and anxiety were great for the freedom of our race, who for many years devoted his time to that service and who had been instrumental in the hands of God, liberating hundreds, if not thousands, of African-American race. We hope that every slave he has been instrumental in freeing is a star in his garment and that he will shine until the perfect day.